Okay, so here we're going to go ahead and we're just going to type this out together. So we know that our class is called Addition Pattern, and we're going to start by saying Public Class Addition Pattern. And we have several variables that we need. Every variable that we make has to be private. So we'll start by saying private. We're told that they're integers. And we're told that the first value represents the starting number. So I'm just going to call this starting num. And then we are going to have the second number represents the value to be added each time. So I'm going to call this number add num. All right. And now we're going to go ahead and take a look at our constructor. Now our constructor is that our constructor is made with two positive integer parameters. And so I'm going to say public addition pattern. And then I'm going to have my two ints. Now there's two different styles of how we go ahead and we make our um, of how we go ahead and make our constructors. Some people like to use the exact same names as what's in their um, program and then just say this dot. Other people like to use different variables. It's totally up to you. I always just use the same number or names so I don't have to think of new names. That's just my preference. All right, so here's our constructor and I'm going to scooch this over just a minute so we can see everything I'm typing and we'll say this dot starting number equals starting num and this dot add num equals add num. All right, so at this point we've gone ahead and we've um, created values for those two variables based on what the constru constructor is supposed to have. Next, we know that we have three methods that we need to include. And when we were talking about this um, problem earlier, when we were looking through it together as in the first video, we talked about how current number returns a value. However, next and prev don't mention any return types. So if it doesn't mention any return type, that means it's a void method and returns nothing. So we are going to have public int current number. We are going to have public void next. And we are going to have public void prev. And based on everything that we've seen in this problem, these are the only methods that we can see that we need. So now let's read how they're going to be worked through. So current number is going to return the current number in the pattern. All right, well, I have a number that I started with, and I have a number that I'm adding, but I never really made a variable for the current number that I'm on. And we can see as we look through all of these test cases, as we add values, our current number changes from our original number. So we need to make another variable to keep track of the current value. So let's make another instance variable. And this is why it's always a good idea if you're handwriting your solutions to handwrite in a way such that you're almost writing every other space on a piece of notebook paper. And in my constructor where I'm starting and creating my object, even though my starting num has a value, when I begin, as we can see from this example here, on the first run of a go, right after I've created my object, the current number is equal to the starting number. So I'm going to go ahead and set up my current num to be equal to my starting num. Otherwise, it would not have the correct starting value. Now that I've done that, whenever I ask for current num, I'm just going to return that value. So I'll just say return current num. All right. <clears throat> now I have the methods next and prev. And if we look at this next, we are told that what this method does is it just adds that um, adding number on to whatever the current number was. So I'm going to say, all right, well, I don't want to add it to starting num because once I've begun adding, starting num is now not important anymore. It's the current number that matters. So I'm going to say current num plus equals add num. Now, a couple things to mention. Other things that you could write here, you could say this dot current num if you want. You can say this dot with all of your instance variables, but the only time you have to use this dot is when you're in a method such as our constructor up here where you have a parameter and an instance variable that have the same name. That is the only time that you have to say this dot. In the method that I have here, since there's no confusion, there's no need to put this dot and it's just more writing. That's why I didn't do it. Another thing to mention is if you prefer 
doing something like this, saying current num equals current num plus add num. Totally, you can do that too. Again, I didn't do that because it's more writing. And when you're in a timed environment, we want to be as quick and concise as possible. All right, so now let's look at our last method. So our last method is previous, which seems pretty obvious. We're just going to subtract add num because we have to go backwards. However, if we look back at the criteria of this method, we are told it moves to the previous number or takes no action if there is no previous number. Now, like I alluded to in our um, pre-reading of the problem, when some people read this, they think, oh, well, I better make an array or I better make a list and keep track of all the numbers. No, 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 we do not need to do that. We know where this pattern started. We know it started at starting num. So we can add as much as we want and we can go backwards but we can only go backwards up until we reach starting num. So at this point, there's a variety of ways that you can do this. Uh, one thing you can do is you can say if current num minus add num is going to be um, less than starting num, then you wouldn't do anything. But rather than say don't do anything you can just say greater than or equal to starting num so essentially what you're doing there is you're saying as long as i can subtract and be ahead of where i started or equal to where i started then go ahead and actually start subtract then i would say current num minus equals add num now notice that right here when I'm doing this if statement, I'm not actually changing my variable. I haven't assigned anything there. And we've seen problems like this in class before and a very common mistake that people made was they did the subtraction and they did the subtraction within an if statement and we don't wanna do that. All right, so this is it guys. That's why I said I feel like these class problems are almost easier. I feel like the code writing is smaller. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the rubric for this problem. Before I go through the rubric, I just wanted to show an alternate solution. In this solution, what they're doing is instead of keeping track of the actual current number, they are keeping track of a variable called x. And this x is essentially telling you how many times you applied the repeated addition. So each time you call next, x increases. And then when you ask for the current number, you just take the number of times you did the increase plus that starting point. So um, a totally different approach, but this same solution would, would earn um, full points. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the uh, rubric. All right, so I want to point out that, in my opinion, again, my opinion, these top four points are super easy. Correct class header, declares private instance variables, correct constructor, he constructor header, and correctly initialize those variables in your constructor. We have been doing this since September, guys. Like, these should be easy points. I, I know you can do this, okay? Now, you'll notice that there's a couple spots where it talks about this general penalty, and they have some general penalties in the rubric, which I'll show in a minute, that you can only get docked once. So even if you did all of those things that said general penalty Z, you would only lose the point one time. Um, then we have our correct method header for next and prev. Now, if you had one of these wrong, you lose that point. They don't do half points anymore. Uh, I know on some of the older AP problems, you might have seen half points, but on, they stopped doing that at least five years ago. Then correct method header for current number, correct implementation of current number. So basically, you have to have the right method header, and then it has to do what it's supposed to do. Um, next and prev, each update the state by the appropriate amount. Notice it doesn't say how you update it because like I showed you, I did the solution one way. The other solution I just showed you was done totally differently, but they both work. So that's why the rubrics are sometimes vague because they are allowing the grader to apply it to the specific approach that the student took. Um, notice that you earn a penalty if you return from these methods because they're supposed to be void. All right, again, you need to get that from reading the description as in words. Um, here, our previous method, we earn an additional point. If we um, move, uh, let's see, prevents moving food note to a number less than the starting value. So if you just blindly subtract a value, you won't get that point. You have to make sure that you're not allowing to go below that value. 
and then we just have extraneous um, solutions. So notice you actually get a point taken off if you print output here. Um, you get a point taken out if you do incorrect checks before your work. Um, and then um, here there's just a general penalty for using variables that you never declared, okay? Um, and then this is a biggie when you have a avoid method or a constructor that returns a value. They really expect you to know that and use that properly, which is why I was, was harping on the, um, of the return types of your methods. All right, so I hope this was helpful, and we're going to spend the rest of the week working on writing class code, and some of the, the problems I will give you will ask you to write some getters and setters just to kind of get in the habit of just writing those methods again. Um, but what you saw here in this problem um, with, you know, the way that we had to do current number, that's an example of how you would see a getter of sorts in your, um, and then prev and next is kind of like how we're seeing this setter within the class code context. All right, that's it, guys.